Welcome to the coming apocalypse. Evangelist and pastor Paul Bagley will take you on a journey into the end times prophecy. He'll examine current world events and explain how they relate to the end times. For decades, Pastor Bagley has provided people all over the world with an understanding of today's world events from a biblical perspective. Now, here's your host, Pastor Paul Bagley. Welcome to the coming apocalypse. I'm Pastor Paul Begley. Today we have a very informative broadcast has to do with the plagues of the end times. Without a question, we're living in a time that's puzzling to some people. We're shocked by the amount of uh, different types of viruses and uh, diseases and plagues that are coming up on the earth out of nowhere. And in this broadcast, we're going to take a look at the coronavirus, the impact of the coronavirus, not only in China, but in the nations around the world, and the economic impact they're, t- they're starting to feel. And what about the locust plague? It is the largest locust plague since the plagues of Egypt. Are we in the end days? Are you serious? We'll be right back to talk about the plagues of the end times in just a moment. Megaquake 2020, Indianapolis, Indiana, May 1st and 2nd, the most anticipated conference of the year. We're going to be discussing Planet X, Nibiru, the pole shifts, the seas rising, the volcanoes, biblical signs from Revelation. We're bringing in the top minds, scientists, biblical scholars, astronomers, all of the people that will be talking about this. Don't miss this conference. I'll see you in Indianapolis. All right, all right, guys. Now, here's the situation. Here we are. The spring time is here. We know flu seasons come. As a matter of fact, the flu of 1918, the great Spanish flu, killed 60 million people around the world, including my great-grandmother. And so it left my grandmother an orphan at 13. I used to hear her talk about the hardship, the bodies, the coffins, and how that the people thought this was the end of the world. But, of course, it wasn't. There would come a great, uh, it was during World War I, and then, of course, World War II and all the rest that we have seen. Here we are now, embarked on a time like I've never seen, where we have colliding uh, forces, plagues and apocalyptic signs, seeming as if they're on a collision course with destiny. The coronavirus has hit the world, and no one saw it coming or at least very few did. And what's happened is, out of Wuhan, China, the coronavirus has exploded on the scene. The numbers of people infected way up in the thousands, and the death toll rising every day by the hundreds. And yet, there's no cure, no vaccine, and really, no one can pinpoint the origin of this end-time plague. And while the bodies are piling up and people are afraid, the question becomes how to prevent it and where will it spread next? We've been noticing that besides China having the majority of the problem, it's starting to spread, of course, in hitting South Korea uh, in a big way and also Italy and other nations, uh, about 40 nations of the world already having cases. Will it continue to become an epidemic or a pandemic of biblical proportion. We will watch to see. But the Bible does talk about plagues in the last days. And Jesus said in Matthew 24, when asked the question, what are the signs of thy coming and the end of the world? Jesus said in verse 4, he said, take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines, pestilences, or diseases, or plagues, and earthquakes in divers places. All of these are the beginning of sorrows. So to answer the question... The plagues of the last days or the plagues of the end times, they, they start the clock ticking 
Even the doomsday clock this year was moved up by uh, 100 seconds to within 90 seconds of the end of time. Never this close before. Is it because of the threat of nuclear holocaust? Maybe. How about incurable diseases and plagues like Ebola, pa deadly pathogens, and then coronaviruses? How about the locust plagues that we're watching? Water turning to wormwood or becoming bitter or poisonous? The massive amount of asteroids that are racing past the Earth, breaking records of near-miss objects, and then the earthquakes, the volcanoes, the eruptions under the ocean, the, and the Fukushima uh, disaster of the earthquake of 2011. And how about the Middle East wars and the peace deal that's on the table? Will it bring peace or sudden destruction? And then the swamp, the political wrangling, the hatred, what almost becoming childlike behavior among the lawmakers of the greatest nation of the world here in America. What does this all mean? And how do people begin to figure out, should they turn back to the Bible? Should they go back and find grandmother's Bible tucked away in the closet and where all the names of the family are wrote down? Maybe it's time to literally open it and start to look into the pages of the Word of God. For there we may find the clues and the prophetic understanding of what's about to take place. Because what has been will be, and what will be has been. Matter of fact, we can prove that to you in the Word of God. The coronavirus, of course, exploded in China. It has spread. A cruise ship called the Diamond Princess has become now the Corona cruise ship. 691 confirmed cases. Five of the uh, passengers have died, and it was only 3,700 people on board. When President Donald Trump said, get the Americans off the ship, he found out 44 of them had the coronavirus. They've been put in special hospitals in Japan where they're being treated and where two of them have already died. The other 400 were flown home on airplanes only to find out that 14 of those came down with the coronavirus while in flight. They've been put in two special quarantined military installations Insta installations, one in Texas and one in California. The quarantining that's starting to take place globally. When Italy saw in one day their number of cases confirmed from three to 240 break out simultaneously in 10 different villages, they realize who's ground, who's patient zero? How did this spread? It's as if it came out of thin air. What are we dealing with? And the next question is, is the coronavirus a virus at all or a bioweapon that was formed in the lab in Wuhan, China? I can't answer that question, but it really feels weird to me that you would have a secret bioweapon or a bio uh, laboratory 900 feet from your largest fish market in a city of 11 million people. It don't take much for one guy to take an early lunch to spread a virus around the nation. Not saying that's how it happened, but I'm saying uh, what is going on here. So with all the confusion and the conspiracy theories and people asking questions, as a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ, I have to go to the word. I realize that we have to find out what the Bible says. And these diseases, these pestilence, these plagues will happen in the last days. Now, I understand that when the temple's built, that there'll be two preachers. They'll be preaching on the streets of Jerusalem. They're called the two witnesses of God. And the Bible tells us that they will send plagues upon the earth. If you'll go with me to Revelation chapter 11 for a moment, let's take a look at this. The Bible talks about it. And here we are now as they're discussing of building the third temple. Matter of fact, Rabbi Yehuda Glick who I've interviewed and had on this broadcast several times, was just arrested, uh, as I'm taping this, last week. He was on the Temple Mount with Congressman from Ohio, Republican Jim Jordan, and, and his wife, and Congressman Mike Johnson of Louisiana, another Republican. 
Now, Jim Jordan was a staunch supporter of President Trump during the impeachment trial, and he fought tooth and nails against uh, Adam Schiff and uh, uh, Congressman Nadler. Uh, the president was acquitted, and so Jordan and his wife and Johnson and his wife and family all went to Israel. And guess what? Yehuda Glick personally took them on a tour to the Temple Mount on a Tuesday morning. Why Tuesday? That's the one day out of the week that only Rabbi Yehuda Glick is allowed to pray on the Temple Mount, the only Jew allowed to pray Tuesday mornings. But that morning he didn't get to. As he's walking on the Temple Mount, he's arrested by the police for walking too slowly. Jordan, uh, uh, Congressman Jordan, protested against it and, he, and was detained momentarily along with uh, Congressman Johnson. They were taken off the Temple Mount. Glick, protesting this was wrong, was drugged off the Temple Mount in handcuffs and then put on 24-hour house arrest before finally being cleared. Why is this going on? It's because the peace deal is coming, and there's some that are fighting against the status quo. I bring this up because of Revelation 11. The Bible says, John said in verse 1, And there was given me a reed like unto a rod. The angel stood, saying, Rise, and measure the temple of God, and the altar, and them that worship therein. But the court which is without the temple, leave out, the measure it not. For it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread underfoot for forty and two months, or three and a half years. And I will give power unto my two witnesses. Here they come, the preachers. And they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days, or twelve hundred and sixty days. Or on the Jewish calendar, which is three hundred and sixty days a year, that is three and a half years. They'll be clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth, and they will devour their enemies. And if any man try to hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. And check this out, guys. Look at verse 6. These have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and have power over the waters to turn them to blood, and to smite the earth with all plagues, as often as they will. So when we're starting to see these plagues in the last days, we're starting to say, well, what are these? We don't have a temple built yet, and we don't have these two witnesses preaching, so why are plagues like coronavirus, Ebola, and others coming? Are they signs of the plagues of the end times? Are they a precursor to the the ramifications of the biblical manifestations of the, of the coming of Jesus Christ. Here's the good news. My daddy preaches all the time. Dad says, I'm not looking for a hole in the ground. I'm looking for a home in the sky. He says, I'm preparing for a place. The Bible says, let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going to go and prepare a place for you. And if I go, I'm going to come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. So I'm expecting the coming of Jesus Christ. But not everybody is going to be going when he comes. Millions are going to be left behind. Don't let this happen to you. Be sure you're rapture ready. Be sure you're prepared for the coming of the king because he's coming soon. When I come back, we're going to take another look at coronavirus and the locust plague that is simultaneously surrounding and eating the things on the earth. I'll be right back in just a moment. A brand new DVD, Rapture Ready. Finally, we're going to answer the question. Millions of people want to know, what is the rapture? When is the rapture? And am I ready for the rapture? Well, this brand new DVD is filled with information, scripture, a PowerPoint presentation that will help you prepare to be rapture ready. We're living in those days. Are you ready to meet the Lord? Get this DVD now at my website. All right, all right, are you serious? If coronavirus is, isn't enough, 
Uh, how would you like to be on that diamond cruise ship, that, what I call the Corona cruise ship, that floating Petri dish? And I, I'm a little nervous now every time I get an airplane because you're breathing all the same air. You know, when I was in Japan for two weeks, 60 to, well, more than that, 70 to 80% of the people were wearing masks. And you, you're walking around thinking, okay, I understand. They had the SARS, they had the mirrors. You know, they're a little nervous. Uh, but coronavirus was certainly starting to grow, and I was hoping Heidi and I was going to get out of Japan in time before they shut the planes down for us to get home. But it's very eerie to live in a world where people are afraid to breathe. But what about the locusts? Now, in the Bible, God sent plagues when they would not let the children of Israel leave. They were in a land of bondage, and before they could leave, it took plagues and plagues and plagues by Moses and the hand of God before the blood could set them free. Now, in the last days, the Bible says there'll be plagues and plagues and plagues before the blood of Jesus Christ is able to set the people free. Let's go to Exodus. Here's what happened. In Exodus chapter 10, verse 12, And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thy hand over the land of Egypt for locusts, that they may come up upon the land of Egypt and eat every herb of the land, even all that the hail has left. And Moses stretched forth his rod over the land of Egypt. And the Lord brought an east wind upon the land all that day and all that night. And when it was morning, the east wind brought locusts. And the locusts went up over the land of Egypt and rested in all the coasts of Egypt. Very grievous were they. Before, there, before them there were no such locusts as they neither after them. So they had never seen anything like it. And folks, until this year, we have never seen, we've seen locust plagues before, but we've never seen anything close to what we have now. A locust plague of biblical proportion has come upon the earth. It's devouring everything in Somalia. It's destroyed the harvest in the, in the fields of Kenya. It is completely eating up Ethiopia. South Sudan is devastated. It's in Iran. It's along the coast of the Red Sea. And it crossed into China, of all places. China, and China is already dealing with the coronavirus. And now the worst invasion of locusts in the history of China hitting the same time that the coronavirus is happening. And this will blow your mind. The town of Wuhan, where the coronavirus originated, a huge amount of black crows hovered over the city for three days, turning the sky dark with crows. It was as if they knew they could smell death. They knew something was about to happen. And then I started asking myself questions. What are these biblical signs about? God, what is going on in China? He reminded me, and you can, I don't know what else to say, I'll leave this up to you, but two years before this happens, China, President Xi made a decision to bulldoze the churches in China, to confiscate Bibles from the people, and to remove every cross from every home or place of business. If you're caught with a cross on the wall, you will end up in the gulags. If you're caught with a Bible, you will end up in a re-education camp. China has the worst human rights violations of any nation in the world. And I'm not afraid to say it because it's, 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 it's well known by the world. But because they're so tied into everybody's economy, we're always afraid to deal with China. But you, I can tell you one that's not afraid to deal with China. There's one that's not afraid to deal with the persecution of Christians and Muslims. Muslims are being persecuted heavy, just like Christians, and that's God Almighty. And he said, vengeance is mine, thus saith the Lord, I will repay. I don't know if that's why the coronavirus is there. I don't know if that's why the black crows are there. I don't know why if that's the locusts are there. I'm just saying it's happening. Now, having said that, let's look at the locusts. Besides the fact that it's eating up uh, East Africa, Northern Africa, excuse me, it's destroying parts of the Middle East now. It's in Saudi Arabia, Iran, as I said, parts of Egypt, along the Red Sea. It is a, it's a plague of biblical proportion. 
Why is it important? You say, Paul, that was back in the days of Moses. Why are you bringing up locusts? Because the Bible prophesies of an even worse plague of locusts for the last days. Go with me to the book of Revelation chapter 9. We're going to read what the Bible says in the prophecy of the, of the apocalypse, the Revelation 9. And the fifth angel sounded. I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth. And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth. And unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. It was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass or the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. Now let's put this together. So God sent the plague of locusts in Moses' days to affect the Egyptians, not the children of Israel. And God sends the plague of locusts that comes out of the abyss, out of the bottomless pit of hell. A star will fall from heaven. Will there be a, an astronomical sign is it Planet X, or is there some kind of sign? Or is this a fallen angel who's released by God to go and unlock the gates of hell to release a spiritual smoke, a spiritual darkness that turns day to night, and in this smoke is the locust plague of persecution, excuse me, of judgment of God. And here's the thing. The locust right now is eating everything green it can but the locust that's coming won't touch the trees, the grass, or the leaves, but it's coming for the men who don't have the seal of God in their forehead. So what kind of a seal do they have? They have the seal of the mark of the beast, and they will be crying, and they will be screaming, and they will be mad and angry. And folks, this is just the beginning of sorrows. We're right now in the precursor period. Let me tell you what happened. And there's an article at the UK Express. I'm in the article they wrote an article about me because I did a video about this plague of locusts because in Bahrain, and, in, and it's also the locust is in Qatar, it's in Kuwait, it's in uh, United Arab Emirates, it's in Bahrain. And in Bahrain, there's a video out, I saw the video, where literally locust comes, there's this black cloud coming, and all of a sudden it just swoops down into the city in Bahrain, and it just turns daytime to darkness. The guys are putting their windshield wipers on as fast as they can, swiping locusts off of their cars. They can't, people are crash, crashing cars, highway grinds to a stop as this locust invades. And it came to me as I was watching this, oh my Lord, this is very, very similar to what's coming out of the bottomless pit in the book of Revelation chapter 9. And, and so it's coming, folks. We're getting the precursors now. The Bible, it literally, and I, and I talked about it in this video, the UK Express wrote an article saying, locust plague, day turns to night as biblical plague of prophecy falls on the Middle East. It goes on to say that Pastor Paul Begley from Indiana, the United States, says this is a precursor, this is a plague of the end times. We are in the last days, folks. And so listen to what I'm telling you. I'm not doom and gloom. I'm just telling you. People are asking questions. They're going to ask you questions. So what's going on with this coronavirus? What's going on with the locust plagues? What's going on with the next plague? Is it disease? Is it hailstorms? Is it straight line winds? Is it volcanic eruptions? People are going to be asking you, since you're a Christian, what does the Bible say about it? You're going to need to know. You know, go to my website. I'm going to just say this. And I got all kinds of material there. Get the signs of his, of, of his coming. Get that DVD. Or get Isaiah's Apocalypse. Get that DVD. Or Rapture Ready. Get that DVD. Get one of those. Because you just need to know what it is. Or come to the conference in Indianapolis, Indiana, May 1st and 2nd, for one of the most powerful conferences ever assembled. I'm bringing in intelligence officers from the government. Uh, former intelligence officers. I'm bringing astronomers to tell us what about the, the, the asteroids, meteorites, Apophis, Planet X, Nibiru, whatever. I'm bringing in, uh, my wife is going to be, she's going to put an entire presentation together on the little green file that was from NASA. We're also bringing in preachers like 
Larry Raglan, Bishop Larry Raglan out of Birmingham, Alabama, who's going to help you understand the spiritual ramification and how the church needs to be on fire. I'm going to be preaching. We're bringing in astronomers uh, like Gil Brazard and others. Mike from around the world is going to be there by satellite. We're going to get information. Why is the earth shaking? Why is the heavens quaking? Why is the devil's back breaking? You want to be at this conference. I've never done this before. It's right here at the beautiful Crown Plaza, Indianapolis, Indiana, May 1st and 2nd. It is a, it's mandatory. You figure out a way to get to Indianapolis. I'll be right back in just a moment. Mega Quake 2020, Indianapolis, Indiana, May 1st and 2nd, the most anticipated conference of the year. We're going to be discussing Planet X, Nibiru, the pole shifts, the seas rising, the volcanoes, biblical signs from Revelation. We're bringing in the top minds, scientists, biblical scholars, astronomers, all of the people that will be talking about this. Don't miss this conference. I'll see you in Indianapolis. All right, folks, all right. Now, listen, I know this sounds like, oh, my Lord, it's a, my hair's on fire. Calm down. The Bible said the Lord hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but love and power and a sound mind. The church has to know what's going on so that we can help explain it to the others. We're not, we're not living in fear. We're walking in faith. Dr. Sumrall, you can't have fear and faith in your heart at the same time. We walk by faith, and we also know what's going on. And we have to have an answer for people when they ask us the question. And that's why you need to study the word, and that's why programs like this can help you. And if you come to the conference, it will help you. But I want you to know right now, they're asking because they're concerned, and they need to know that Jesus is the answer. Jesus Christ can take all the problems and worries away, and he can encourage them to find out about the joy of being saved. Look, we've got more time left. I don't know how much, but we do. And let's get people saved. Let's get them to Christ. I want to encourage you in the love of Christ. Can I pray with you right now to the church and to those of you not saved? Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we just pray that the spirit of your love and peace and your, your space of grace be here for us today. God, we know that the world's in trouble and you said in the world we'll have trouble, but in you we'll have peace. So forgive us of our sins. Cleanse us from our iniquities. Wash us in your precious blood and fill us with the power of the Holy Ghost, that joy of the Lord, which is our strength. Lord, bless us. Help us to learn about the events of the last days and to prepare people to be ready, rapture ready, for the return of Jesus Christ. So, Lord, forgive us of our sins. Cleanse us and save us. Help us to walk according to your will. And we give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen.
hold your hands and beg and plead and keep on praying. You gotta cry, rain, tears of pain, pound the floor and scream his name. This world back to God Oh, give it back